All right, it is time for film chat slash tag. Yes, a film tag. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this films by genre tag. I am really excited to do this. This was a tag that was co-created by Nixon Nax and Rihanna Toria and it's actually, it's from back from 2016. I did not, I have not found tons of film tags but because I talk about books, films, TV, and gaming, I like to do tags about all of the different things. So I went hunting and this is the one I found. It's a great idea. What you do is you share your favorite film from any one particular genre. So there's a list of genres. You go through the list. Some have two noted, so you can either pick two titles or one for each. I will admit I, I cheated a little bit here and there when there are some that I just couldn't pick one favorite, but I didn't do it too often, so only sometimes, only sometimes. So the first genre is action adventure, so you can pick an action and an adventure, or two action adventure films, that's how it is. I decided to go with one for each, and for action, I went with Predator. Yeah, it had to be a Schwarzenegger 80s film. <laughs> it was sort of like, it, I, I initially picked Terminator, but I'm like, is that really an action movie? <laughs> I don't know. Predator, definitely an action film. I know it so well. There's so many, like, just just amazing moments throughout the film. Absolutely love it. So it is my action pick. And it's, I don't, it's, it was hard to come up with a lot of these. Like, there's so many options. So, but it is the one that I chose. Next week, it might have been a different cho choice. Last week, it might have been a different choice. But today, my favorite action movie is Predator. So my favorite adventure movie, I'm actually going to go with Excalibur. I, I could not think of many adventure movies. Something with a quest. Something with challenges to overcome. And I feel like there's there's a lot of action movies. But in terms of, like, adventure. I couldn't come up with many until I thought of Excalibur because of course, yeah, what what more of an epic quest can you do than Arthurian and like Excalibur and the Grail and my goodness and now I want to rewatch it because I love this movie so very much also from the 80s. Oh my goodness, I wonder how many of these are going to end up being 80s films. We will find out. We will find out. I don't think the next one is. Next category is animation or family film. And I went with one for each. And I'm going to go with Final Fantasy The Spirits Within for animated film. And I'm surprised at that. I'm really surprised at that. I just, there's something about this movie that I love. I didn't have any context for it when I saw it. I just, I, the big, you know, the big to do when it came out was how amazing the the animation was and how realistic it was. I haven't watched it recently. I'm curious as to what it would feel like now and, or, and if we have made more leaps and bounds. I think animation's gone in, in some different ways. Um, but yeah, I, there's just something about this. I like the story, first off. And, yeah, there's just something super, super special about this movie to me for some reason. I don't know. For family movie, I went with The Secret of Nim, so we're back to the 80s. Um, yeah, I, I I love this movie with Mrs. Brisby and little Timothy and Nicodemus. And I just like, oh, it's just so good. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Um, it's, it's a really wonderful story. I have read the book. Did I read the book? I got the book out of the library. I don't think I read it, actually. And the book, it's Mrs. Frisbee. Why change it from Frisbee to Brisbee? I don't know. But it's a really, really wonderful story. Talking animals, you know, a big bad. It's really wonderful. It's actually kind of an adventure story, too, because there's a kind of, it's not a mythical quest, but there's definitely a really big challenge to overcome, so, and lots of, oh, so, I love that movie. Anyway, okay, on to the next. Comedy. <laughs> okay, so I went with Get Smart for comedy. Comedy is my least watched genre, probably, and I often just don't enjoy comedies, but I, but the ones that I do, they often feature characters that are take things literally and are very straight laced, like get smart. Um, it could have easily been Hot Fuzz, which the, has a similar dynamic um, or a similar character. It just tends to be how I like it. Or Red. I like Red too. It doesn't have that character though. It doesn't have a very literal character. But Get Smart is a highly rewatchable film to me. I just really enjoy it. There's an earnestness to um, Steve Carell's character that I really enjoy. And I just... I can watch it anytime, anywhere. 
often do. It's my current repeat watch. I always pick one thing on Netflix to put on if I just need to watch something. And when Get Smart is available, Get Smart is the pick. Hellboy often is the pick, but right now it's Get Smart. <laughs> Next up is drama. Oh, I forgot to add to drama by saying it before flipping the page. This one was another hard one for me. I decided to go with Red Lights, um, which I watched a couple of years ago. I think for my 2012... 31 Days of Horror. I actually probably did a video about it. I wonder what it looks like. Oh, it's probably horrible. If I did do a video, I will leave a link in the corner for that if anyone wants to watch a seven-year-old video of me talking about this movie. But it has really stuck with me. It has a paranormal angle to it. It follows a, a physicist uh, who kind of debunks paranormal things um, in terms of usually psychics. I love this movie, like, I, and I had no idea I was going to love it so much. I absolutely love it. Great storytelling, really interesting characters, great performances. It was like, it just blew me out of the water. So that was my drama pick. Next up, we are going to fantasy, which is when we're going to start cheating. Because <laughs> I could not pick between Oh, gosh, I picked another drama. Okay, so, okay, yeah, The the Professional. Okay, so that technically... Th this is one movie, like, you could kind of put it in action, too. I forgot I put it in drama. But this is, like, in my top five favorite movies of all time. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, stars uh, Jean Reno and a very young Natalie Portman. Um, directed by... I think it's, it's Luc Besson, I think. Um, and... Um, yeah, he's a he's a professional, he's a hitman, and befriends a young girl in the same apartment building. If you haven't seen it, everyone should see this movie. Like, seriously, everyone needs to see this movie. It is brilliant, and I love it so, so very much. Okay, so now we are on to fantasy and cheating with fantasy, because I couldn't pick between Harry Potter and... Lord of the Rings. I, you know, I don't really think there's any need to pick between the two. I love them both so very much. It's weird because Harry Potter, I would actually say with Harry Potter, I love, I think I love the films a little bit more. There's something about them that, and and the fact that there's so many because there's eight. And so it was, the films were being made over like, it must have been almost a decade that it feels I don't know, I feel more centered in that universe, especially because I read all the books and I enjoyed all the books. Whereas Lord of the Rings, I love the world that they created and it feels so flushed out. And I, But there are, I do have things about it, certain, especially the second and third film that I'm not, you know, 100% I didn't think worked or, you know, uh, whatever. Um, but I love the first movie, Fellowship of the Ring. Um, but I think of these in series. But for me, with Harry Potter, I love them all. I love the first one. I love the second one. Like, not many people love the second one. I love the second one. I love all of the movies in different ways, and I enjoyed all of the books. And, um, except for the, the one where they got huge, then I was like, like, the fourth book, it took me a long time to read. But eventually... <laughs> I got there with all of them and I really enjoyed them. Whereas Lord of the Rings didn't enjoy the books very much, but I love the world so much. But it doesn't feel like it's Earth because it's Middle Earth. And um, whereas Harry Potter feels like the real world because it is set in the real world. So both are just, just wonderful in different ways. And so I'm not picking. You can't make me. <laughs> Next category is musical. This was probably the easiest. There is nothing that is ever going to knock this off the best musical ever. And that is Jesus Christ Superstar. This is just cemented in my memory in like nostalgia. I know every word. I know every song. I know where all of the dances are. I can tell if I'm listening to the soundtrack that is not the original soundtrack, but rather the Broadway soundtrack, even if it's the same actors or singers. Like I just know this very, very well well um and um and it's i just absolutely adore it there's just it's the one for me it's the one yeah for musicals yep okay next category is romance this was a bit hard because it wasn't romantic comedy and there's not tons of romance and i think actually almost all romances really are romantic comedies i decided to go with kate and leopold um, there is something so sweet about this one, um, and I really love their relationship. Hugh Jackman is awesome in this, and I I didn't realize till I was looking it up that it is a bit of a time travel romance. 
very light because it's mostly modern day set. Um, and um, but it's just really sweet. I think they used to play it on TBS a lot because uh, I don't own it, but I, I know it really well. And there's certain moments of it that I will never forget. You know, the whole pressing the dishwasher, but make sure she sees you pressing the dishwasher button. That like, <laughs> that's just, I don't know. That was just a great moment. Anyway, my romance pick is Kate and Leopold. Now we're on to mystery and crime, and I ended up picking one for each, and the first one is Dead Again for Mystery. Wow, this is an extraordinary movie with Kenneth Branagh, and it's Emma Thompson, plus Andy Garcia, I forgot he was in it, uh, Derek Jacoby, and Hannah, oh, Shia Gala. don't know how to pronounce her name. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen this, I highly recommend it, extraordinary storytelling, really and really great performances it just came I remember when it came out it felt like it came out of nowhere like all of a sudden it was the movie that everyone was talking about and then when I saw it I realized why it was the movie that everyone was talking about so that is definitely my pick for mystery and then for crime I decided to go with Animal Kingdom um, I mentioned this in my most anticipated releases of 2019 because the director of this film and several of the cast members are going to be in a Netflix film called The King um, so which reminded me of how much I love this it came out in 2010. It's an Australian film, has an extraordinary cast, and it's about a crime family, about a young, uh, like a teen guy who ends up uh, sort of moving in with his extended family, and who, you know, that is how they support themselves, is through crime. And, but it's, there's, oh, it's just, it's so good. The movie is so good. I just, like, it was when I was realized, I remember when I saw it, I was like, that is a 10 out of 10 film. That is a perfect movie. And I just, for me, it hit, like, just everything was great. The writing, the acting, the story, the ev the moments, the, the just everything about it was great. And since then, anytime any of the actors or the director do anything, I always want to watch it. <laughs> I always want to watch it. So that is my pick for crime. Next up, we have science fiction. There is only one answer to this for me. Star Wars, Episode Four: A New Hope. Yeah, like, yeah, the, like it was weird actually when I when I came across this picture, I was like that the picture's too clear. Like for me, still Star Wars is like fuzzy VHS. <laughs> like I love seeing it remastered. Don't get me wrong. Well, you know, there's a whole conversations about what kind of remastering and all that kind of stuff. But just like for me, it's still seeing it, it with this kind of clarity feels strange because that's not what my memory has in terms of the original Star Wars. So yeah, science fiction for science fiction, it's just like you know, again, nothing's going to hold the candle. That's probably why I wanted to add, like, Terminator to action adventure, because because <laughs> it's science fiction, but nothing's going to beat Star Wars. Next up, we have Thriller, and I actually can't remember what I picked. Oh, Alien. Yeah, so cheating again, because it's definitely horror. But I think, you know, Alien, you can fit into horror, you can fit into science fiction, you can fit into thriller. Because I would say, although it's set in space, therefore science fiction, and it was definitely horrific and, like, traumatizing, so definitely horror. But for me, the sort of defining factor about Alien is the tension. How it builds up tension throughout the film and it gets greater and greater and greater and for me that's actually a sign of a thriller you know it's, it's sure they tend to be more plot based you know and this is plot based too like this there's not tons of dialogue but i don't know like i still think of it as a thriller so i'm picking alien <laughs> Next category is teen or high school pick, and I went with Gidget. I love Gidget. It's one of my favorite movies. I don't talk about it a lot because it's just, it don't have lots of ways to like work in Gidget, but I just I absolutely I absolutely love it. It's one of my all time favorite movies. I used to watch it all of the time. Like I just used to repeat watch it and make popcorn and watch Gidget and just it made everything feel a little bit better in the world. So that is my teen or high school pick. It's kind of weird for a high school pick because it's in the summer, but it's definitely a teen pick. Um, next up is a chick flick, which I, I, I don't... Well, I picked something. I picked something. What did I pick? I picked Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion. That actually felt like a really good selection for this. I really enjoyed this movie so much. It was a big surprise. Um, again, I don't watch a lot of comedies, but this one just hit all the right marks. I love the friendship of Romeo and Michelle. 
I can quote it like <laughs> I probably do quote it like all the time like even if it's just something simple like let's fold scarves <laughs> like so that, that line just like comes to me like just in the middle of the day or when I'm folding my laundry I'm like I don't know it's just it's another high for me another highly rewatchable really really enjoyable movie um and then next up we have superhero and I did cheat again with this one I picked a couple of different things and I started with X-Men, the original X-Men, and I love this movie. I think it was one of the first superhero movies I saw in the theater as a, like, that, that, I don't know, that felt like, I don't know, there was something, I don't know how to describe it, actually. I, I've always liked the X-Men, I like the TV series, the animated series, and I read some of the comics, so seeing those characters and that story come to life was really special and magical, and I, and also someone I know was an extra in it, and I saw them in, like, I, I could pick them out during the scene, and that was really, always what makes it hold a special place in my heart, but I just, I generally do like X-Men, and there was just, I, there's something really special when I saw this one in the theater, but that one's from a while back, and so I also wanted to pick some newer ones because I know we're really in the rise of or we're past the rise of superhero movies we have lots to enjoy now and one of the ones that's my favorite is Thor again this one felt like a perfect movie the story was great the acting was great the majesticness of like um Asgard was amazing I wasn't sure how that was they were going to do that and how they were going to get it like even the rainbow bridge like it just and I loved it I loved all of it and I especially loved the story of the character the or the character arc of Thor in this was just amazing and it's funny too so it hit lots of great marks on this one um but now we finally have Wonder Woman and a female protagonist film why does it just say Wonder <laughs> Oh, it says Wonder Woman underneath. So yeah, we finally have a female protagonist superhero film, and um, I'm filming this before I've seen Captain Marvel. That could easily make the list as well, but I don't know yet because I haven't seen it. I'm pre-filming this. So anyway, but Wonder Woman, being able to see a female superhero on the screen was, like, I envy girls that are growing up now because there just was nothing like that. Nothing like that. So it's so special, and I loved it. 100% loved it. Such a great movie. So that is my superhero pick, my three superhero picks. And for, okay, next up we have martial arts. And I can't remember if I cheated on this or decided to pare it down to one. Let's see what happens. Okay, I cheated. So um, Kill Zone, the original title of this is SPL. It's a Hong Kong uh, action movie starring Donnie Yen. And it is amazing. And Samuel Hung. And I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I didn't get to see it when it was here, when it was at TIFF. So I finally ended up seeing it on DVD. And I was like, this movie is amazing. And then I did see the sort of sequel, Flashpoint, um, at TIFF the following year or some other year. Um, but Kill Zone, there's just something, there's something so amazing about it. It is, it can be a little saccharine at times, but the action is extraordinary. I loved it. The hand-to-hand -hand combat action, um, of course, because it's martial arts. So Kill Zone or SPL. And then also The Raid, which I did see at TIFF. Um, and, um, and I've talked about this a couple times recently because uh, the protagonist played by uh, Iko Uruis is um, was in Skyline, Beyond Skyline. And, and so now I'm like, I want to do a mini marathon of the other films that he's done that I haven't seen. And they popped up a few, like Murren Tao ended up popping up on Netflix, which is awesome. Um, and he's a, an, an extraordinary martial artist. And um, so I've enjoyed all of the films I've seen that he's in. And uh, but The Raid was like, wow, it's really, really tense. <laughs> it's really tense, but it's so good. So speaking of tension, next up we have horror, and I'm going with The Changeling. For me, this is my all-time scariest movie, is The Change. Oh no. Okay, my all-time scariest movie is not a horror movie, so we'll just, my all-time scariest horror movie is definitely The Changeling from 1980. It is so scary. It is, I, it's one that after I rewatched it once, and then I was like, yeah, no more rewatching of that. It's too scary. It's too scary. Let's just leave it at that. Um, next up is a war or historical film. And with that, I went with Mongol. And um, yeah, and this has the surtitle of a... Uh, oh, oh, I picked a French one. Okay, so it's directed by Sergei uh, Baldrov. And it follows... Uh, it's a story of Genghis Khan. And it's really good. And it actually matches both war and historical, I would say. So yeah, that is my choice for war historical. And for foreign film, I went with 
In the Mood for Love, which is in my top five of all time, and I couldn't pick just one. So In the Mood for Love is by Wong Kar Wai, and if you haven't seen it, just see it. It's so special. Um, but I, I, I picked one more because I couldn't, because I have two foreign films in my top five, and my second one is La Strada by Fellini. It's an extraordinary movie. I saw it in my Italian film class and I was like blown away, blown away. I was like, what is that? I don't, again, it's like sometimes with some films, it's like, I don't know what it is about it in particular. Even I cannot articulate with this particular film why I like it other than the fact that I like it. I feel something when I watch it. I don't know why, but I do. <laughs> so La Strada. So those are my 17-ish answers for the um, films by genre tag. I would like to tag Chris and Toria. I would like to tag Eldritch Secrets. And I would like to tag Sean from Media Assault. And I would like to tag you. If you would like to do this tag, feel free to do the tag. I will leave all of the categories down below for you to pick and choose from and um, and let me know if you do do it. And if you generally like to do tags, right? I love doing tags in the comments and I will add you to my list of people to tag because I do plan to do tags more regularly. Actually, by the time this film goes up, uh, this film, this video goes up, I should be doing tags regularly. Hopefully, if all goes according to plan. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please feel free to let me know uh, what your favorites are in these. If you don't want to do the tag yourself, you feel free to copy paste the questions and just answer them in the question in the comments. That's cool too. It's all good. So there you go. My favorite films by genre. There are so many. It was a lot of fun to do this tag. Okay, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.